<clears throat> now we come to Charles Haddon Spurgeon yet again, this time on a sermon entitled Two Advents of Christ. The Two Advents of Christ. Now this is three minutes 46 seconds into this sermon. Three minutes and 46 seconds of waffle. On earth, as lived its time and the body has died, the soul is to revisit this earth again. For after this, the judgment. Every man will have two advents. The advent which he now enjoys, or which he now misuses upon earth, and the advent which lies beyond the present course of probation. After he has descended to the tomb, he shall come here again. His bones shall come together, bone to his bone. Really? The flesh shall come upon the skeleton, and really? the spirit shall return, either from the heaven where it rejoices, oh, or from God. the hell where it howls, to inhabit the body once again, and to stand upon the earth. What a prat. Where's he got this from? Where on earth does he get this from? Hey? <sighs> Let's just go back one and consider what this heres heretic has just picking said. It's back as belief. The first. But now, <coughs> once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin mm -hmm. by the sacrifice of himself. This is fact the second. But you have not got the full weight of the comparison yet. After man's spirit has once been on earth, has lived its time, and the body has died, mm -hmm. the soul is to revisit this earth again. From where? Where is it supposed to revisit the body from? For after this, the judgment. Every man will have two advents. The advent which he now enjoys, or which he now misuses upon earth, and the advent which lies beyond the present course of probation. After he has descended to the tomb, he shall come here again. His bones shall come together, bone to his bone. Mm -hmm. The flesh shall come upon the skeleton, and the spirit shall return, either from the heaven where it rejoices, or from the hell where it howls, to inhabit the body once again, and to stand upon the earth. So, we don't know where they're coming from, these spirits. If we presume that he is saying that spirits come from heaven and spirits come from hell to be joined with their body, where is that found in scripture? Fancy all of hell being emptied of billions of souls. It's just lunacy. It's, it's just, for want of a better word, I, I, can you imagine it in the physical world? Billions upon billions of graves opening up, bones reconstituted, flesh put on them, blood, veins, the whole lot. Hey? Eh? It's just madness even to think about it. Standing there, Hitler standing there, Mussolini standing there, Ben Gurion standing there. <sighs> All the Old Testament are standing there. There's billions of pigging bodies standing on top of one another. And graves opened up on top of one another. It's just, just balmy. And buildings, of course, coming down because the graves are underneath the buildings and so on and so on and so on and so forth. It is nowhere in Scripture. Secondly, Mr. Spurgeon, Jesus Christ must, therefore, having been entombed, must be in that tomb. And so he's going to come back, is he? Jesus Christ. To go into that tomb and his body's going to be. Hmm? No. You see what you're missing, Mr. Spurgeon, you Arminian, is the fact that to be present 
To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord for a Christian. To be absent from the body for a non-Christian is to be present with the devil in hell. And that's a fixed position. Because we've entered eternity at the point of our translation, departing from this world. Although this world sees a body in the grave, the body in the grave, because of eternity, is joined, transformed in the twinkling of an eye and joins us, if you can get this perception, in eternity with us. It's hard for the carnal mind to see this because it sees a literal body and it is a literal body in the grave. And it's a literal coffin in the grave and it's a literal grave. But when looked upon in heaven, the body's there in heaven. Just as the body of Jesus Christ is with Jesus Christ in heaven. He is, he's gone before. We must all come here again. What though the place that now knows us shall know us no more forever? Yet somewhere upon this earth we shall stand. What? What though we should be unable to recognize any likeness between that and the place in which we lived, and unable to recognize any likeness between us and what we were? Yet hither we must return to receive our appointed doom. What? <laughs> it just absolutely beggars belief. We must come here to... Uh, appointed... Oh, for God, my goodness. So where are we coming from, Mr. Spurgeon? If we're in heaven, with no doom. If the soul is in hell, there is doom already. This man is away with the, with the glass. Now, so is it with Christ. He has once died, Let's go he back. is to come. Yet somewhere upon this earth okay. we shall stand. What though we should be unable to recognize any likeness between that and the place in which we lived, and unable to recognize any likeness between us and what we were, Yet hither we must return to receive our appointed doom. But we have had bodies. Now, so is it with Christ. What? He has once died, and he is to come a second time. A second time is his body to be on earth. After death, the judgment. Only when we speak of Christ, he shall come not to be judged, but to be the judge. After death comes the reward with us. After death, the reward with him. After our death comes our resurrection. That is already passed upon Christ. As a resurrection shall come to saint and sinner, the final audit and pronunciation of the sentence, so Christ shall come to the final gathering together of his elect and the final overthrow of all his enemies, to the final crowning of his head, when he shall have put all things under his feet and reign forever and ever. What a put of mush. Eh? Jesus Christ is crowned with every crown because he has all authority and power over all things. Mr. Spurgeon. He is not to be crowned, he's already crowned. And all his enemies are his footstool. In essence, and when scripture says that they shall become, it simply means that he shall put down all power and authority in the world. You see, at the present time, all knees bow before Jesus Christ the Lord. He has power and authority over them, over all things, gives life, breath and being to all things. All things are subject, hence the metaphor bowing knee. Now, Jesus Christ allows a certain amount of freedom to the individual to go about their lives and to order their lives. All right? But one day that will all cease and all shall be subject utterly, in practical terms, 
to Jesus Christ. None will ever lift their hand to accuse Jesus Christ of anything. To blast, theme Jesus Christ, to war against Jesus Christ. All that will end. It'll stop. It'll stop. Spurgeon doesn't understand a pegging thing. Coming back a second time. What else did he have to say? He has once died, and he is to come a second time. A second time is his body to be on earth. After death, the judgment. Only when we speak of Christ, he shall come not to be judged, but to be the judge. After yes. death comes the reward with us. After death, the reward with him. After our death comes our resurrection. That is already passed upon Christ. Our resurrection. God. And he actually actually calls this the first resurrection. In other sermons. Because he doesn't believe the scriptures and the reality that the first resurrection is of the soul. And I still like to know, Mr. Spurgeon, where souls are coming from to be joined with the body. Billions and billions of souls to billions and billions of bodies standing on top of each other's shoulders for space on the earth. Picking clown. As a resurrection shall come to saint and sinner, the final audit and pronunciation of the sentence, so Christ shall come to the final gathering together of his elect and the final overthrow of all his enemies to the final crowning of his head when he shall have put all things under his feet and reign for ever and ever. Having thus, I think, brought out the parallel of the text, I will leave it for you to think over. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, tell you what, Mr. S Mr. Spurgeon, eh? shall we just nip along to the scripture instead of your neo-evangelical crap? Hmm? Shall we go along to Second Thessalonians for one? Okay. Chapter 1 of 2 Thessalonians hmm? and verse 7 And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints. You know, Mr Spurgeon, he shall come in fire. In his presence, everything shall be consumed in his holy presence. This world is... Reserved unto fire. Totally. Okay. Seeing then. 2 Peter. 3. 10 rather. 2 Peter. 3. Chapter 3 verse 10. Okay, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in whole holy conversation and goodness. How about Revelation chapter 20 verse 8 is it? And we can go on and on and on quoting scripture to you, you neo-evangelical brat of hell. Okay, verse 9. And then went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The fire, of course, is Jesus Christ who first of all came down from out of God declaring peace and goodwill to all men. Now he's declaring the day of judgment in which 
the heavens shall pass away with fervent heat. This is the final day, Mr. Spurgeon. Jesus Christ isn't coming down for judgment. Ju judgment is past. It's the conclusion of all things and the final judgment behind the veil. Which shall be done within the twinkling of an eye. As it all is in eternity, Mr. Spurgeon, and not one saint will ever stand there in judgment. They are in heaven and they shall not return for their bodies because their bodies shall be with them as glorified bodies, even as Jesus Christ's body was glorified upon his death. They shall be in heaven. With Christ, it was more because of the the times then present of the Old Testament just dying out, as it were, physically, literally, over the space of time. So therefore it could be made more manifest that the body of Christ was not there, it was in heaven and glorified. We'll come back to this in a minute, Mr. Spurgeon.